Me sinto. Me vejo. Me formo. Existo. Me sinto. Me, sinto. Me vejo. Me, vejo. Me, formo. Me formo. Existo. Me sinto. Me vejo. Me, vejo. Me formo. Existo. Me sinto, me vejo, me foro, existo. Agora e por mais 30 anos, e 30 anos depois disso. Me apresento e me represento como a arte, carne, corpo e movimento. Me sinto, me vejo, me formo, de todas as formas, existo. Sobre realidades imersivas, tecnologias, diversidade, mas também o panorama internacional, conectando ideias, projetos. E hoje, especialmente, a gente vai contar aqui também com o é, um depoimento e, e algumas imagens mais ilustrativas mesmo para vocês conhecerem os projetos do Aero Tianin. Yes. Ah, então, bem-vindos. Agora eu vou passar agora a falar inglês com o nosso convidado. So, hi, Aero. Welcome to Brazil, welcome to Mix Festival. Muito obrigado. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, just introduce a little bit about you to people. Uh, you are VR director and experience designer, yes, based in Finland. Yeah. Great. And here it's really interesting that uh, at the moment um, there is this festival leader of Embrace, event for immersive art experience that you made, yes. And also you are making multiplayer VR experience, yes. Great. Uh, so, here just for you to know a little bit about him, uh, he made Master of Art from Media Lab in Nauto University, focusing in VR, interactive narratives, game design and world building. So, you can share with us all your back knowledge. <laughs> yes. And today you're going to talk more about your last project Love Simulation Eve. Yes. So that's it people. Let's hear our special guest. Thank you so much. All right. Nice to be here. I'm, I'm honored to be here really. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, so my name is Edo Tiainen. Indeed. Uh, and Love Simulation Eve is a very much work in progress. <laughs> uh, so you will see material like that was shot like yesterday in here. Uh, so what I'm gonna talk about is kind of a, the, the design process of Lost Motion Eve and um, and the kind of the grand ideas or like the general ideas, more general ideas behind behind the design process and the artistic process of it too. And I will be showing um, clips from our content production pipeline and, and how we are actually producing this VR content uh, and how we are approaching the whole design process. Uh, and we are talking about intimacy here quite a lot in your own. Right. Um, so this is uh, just a kind of a few few uh, photos from my few few of the last years. Uh, so I've been uh, working in several research groups in Aalto University in Helsinki or Potaniemi actually there uh, and there we were also developing Happy Plus last year uh, so that's this picture from there uh, I was running VR Hub there uh, and then uh, I've been doing kind of different kinds of VR projects both cinematic, you can see it runs in blood, it's a horror experience in VR uh, combining VR um, Film and, and immersive theater. Uh, this this one here, the Spirit of Otaniemi, is a documentary about the uh, campus area. Uh, 
then there is this kind of ironic like anonymous. It was actually comedy, uh, short film, uh, also shot in, in 360 film or cameras. Ever Spy is, is a uh, ga game that is making, so we have developed a demo of it. It's, it's coming later on. Embrace is, a, is an event that I was part of founding uh, last year. We had the first Embrace event, XR art event. Uh, so I'm happy to talk about that too. Uh, Fever is Finnish Virtuality Association, so I'm actually also in, uh, in the board there. So <laughs> a little bit similar to you, I guess, uh, in here in that sense. Uh, yes, and I've been LARPing, for instance, and I have a background in theater too. Um, uh, but this is from LARP, so live action role play there. And then I've been designing, narrative designing uh, one, one escape room game too. All right, um, but yes, so let's get to the business or to the, to the core. So there is love. There is love in this world. Is it here? Do you, do you have some answers? <laughs> there is it. Is it in your body or is it in between us or is it, is, is it, does it exist? Well, these are the questions we are actually asking in, in this production. So, um, Last Generation Eve is uh, Cobra produced with my company, Arts Journey, and then uh, with International Theatre of Finland. Uh, and uh, we have uh, great partnerships, which, which is the only way to do this kind of a pioneering uh, work, really. Uh, EMAP, for instance, is the largest art museum in Finland, and the University Helsinki Access Center is the, the biggest uh, access center in the Nordic countries. We are actually working in there, our office is there. 8i is this volumetric content um, service provider, and so on, so on. Yes, but what is Love Simulation Eve? Well, it's a little bit difficult to describe, but it has a cinematic content, but it's set in a, in a location-based entertainment place, basically, which is this theater space. So it will be premiering in Espoo City Theater, the Inner City Theater of Finland, next March. So the, the production is really, really much going on at the moment. <laughs> Long hours there. Um, so. Altogether, this production is 90 minutes, and it has different parts in it. Uh, the middle part is VR, and then there's like these audio parts, for instance, and immersive theater, interactive theater parts also. So it's like a assemblage of many things. Um, basically, our may, maybe the, the the central thing that we are aiming to do with Last Motion Eve is to foster these one-on-one -on -one encounters between the players. Um, and to create micro-loving moments. Uh, I will get later on to, to more, uh, to, to define it a little bit better for you, this micro-loving moment, what does it mean even? All right, here's, a, here's our crew. crew. Um, there's a quite, quite bunch. Uh, this has been started, we, we started this like five years ago as an immersive theater uh, performance, but then a uh, couple of years ago, I, I saw that the time is right for actually trans transforming this to VR. So uh, that's what we did, and uh, I pitched this to the International Theatre of Finland leader and director, and, then, and that's how it how it was uh, started this project. Uh, here should be a short trailer. So this is really short. Pay attention when I'm with this. teaser actually, not even a trailer. Uh, in that teaser you see a glimpses from uh, water spirits, love simulation in water spirits. So love simulation in water spirits is five minutes long uh, two player encounter within the whole whole evening long love simulation E. So we have taken out this one part of it and uh, we are now actually uh, 
distributing it to museums, art museums globally, and uh, different kinds of events, festivals. Maybe we will see it in here in the future, hopefully. Um, so it is, it is for two players at the same time. They meet in this kind of a ocean, like this kind of a, a night, night uh, ocean uh, space, and they can actually, with their body movements, they can control the water. So there's like this telepresence or like tele, telekinesis happening. Like when they are moving their hands, they're actually getting the, the waves are going higher, and then they can formulate this kind of a, a creative compositions from those wave particles, basically, in that experience. Uh, but yeah, it's basically like also working as a promotion for the whole evening long thing, too, for us. Okay, so, but now I'm gonna talk about the actual, the whole evening long performance, VR performance, Love Change E. So, uh, it has, as I said, three different sections. So, um, it will start as uh, audio introduction here. Uh, it is listened at home the night before you arrive to the theater space. So we actually sent you a link when you are purchasing your ticket to, to the audio section. It's like 15 minutes long, long thing. Uh, and that, that will give you the, the overall idea and the, the frame story. Then uh, it has a virtual reality part when you arrive to the theater space. So you are taken to this individual uh, player cube and given headsets. Uh, the assistants are helping you there. And then there's the one on one encounters last. So here's how it looks actually when we are looking at the theater space. This is the large space of the uh, ESPO or the University Theater of Finland. So, um, the people arrive, there's the red arrow there on top hand. So that's the waiting area, they are right there. There is al already a material, uh, narrative material from the main characters there. And then they are taken to their individual player group, uh, player um, places, rooms here, these white ones. Um, and then the, the yellow is the final encounter place. So that's where they meet actually first the, the actors, performers, the, the characters, one on one. And then after that, they will be taken to this little cube and they will meet each other there. And they will create this micro loving moment with each other with the headphone instructions. On. And it will be like a surprise moment in the end that they will meet each other. Uh, but yeah, this is the overall structure uh, of the whole piece. But now. Uh, let's go to the actual storyline and uh, what, it, what is it about. So, uh, the way we have started to think about the design of Lush and Lush and Eve is I've been inspired by Katarina Numinen's uh, idea about three great ways or three approaches to dramaturgy. The dramaturgy of narratives, which is the, maybe the traditional way of seeing dramaturgy. It's, it's kind of a composing the the emotional journey of the of the experiencer, like let's say in a film, for instance, the Aristotelian <coughs> character arcs and whatnot. Uh, but then there is a, also a dramaturgy of game and dramaturgy of play. Uh, game meaning that it has like a structures, uh, it has like an end goal, it has like rules to, to get to the end goal, and most in many games there is a winning state or losing state also defined or, or and some kind of metering kind of points to get towards the to the end goal uh, so it's a whole another way of thinking and then there's an dramaturgy of free play as i know translated here um, it's like a kids play or like role play for instance can be like free play where you are given the the tools and then you can freely create something from those tools, basically. But yeah, uh, these three dramaturgical approaches we have been thinking and, and considering Love Change E. So first of all, the dramaturgy of story starts, it starts from the very first point that you see our marketing messages, for instance, uh, in, in uh, social media, Instagram. 
um, there is this kind of a quite quite a strong uh, sentences about claims about the world maybe um, and and we try to make this in interesting and kind of a inviting talk like this kind of lot of element there <laughs> uh, should be there in the in the marketing and we consider all the steps leading to the performance and buying the ticket for the performance already kind of part of the narrative journey so this is from the website actually it, it says it right right like this there so so it's like daring you you're not going going to believe what I'm gonna tell you the world is not how you think it is basically uh, and we hope hope that this will be this will be uh, raising up the interest in people so the, the train story is that the year right now is 2068 at the moment and we are all living in this kind of a virtual space uh, it's possible because we all have done uh, this kind of digital mind upload uh, in the future and it allows us to relive our lives basically our memories in our in our lives so we are living in this kind of virtual everland it's provided by the labs everland allows you to relive your your life and at the moment you're re reliving 2022 uh, so Love Simulation Eve is actually an invitation for you to come to update your life in Everland and update your life for more loving and, and, and uh, to fulfill your dreams with, uh, with Love Simulation. So that's possible if you are able to generate your personal love algorithm during this performance. So that's the, that's the goal, goal of the player, goal of the participant. So your personal love algorithm is generated from one-on-one -on -one encounters that you have during the, the performance. These one-on-one -on -one encounters can be with uh, with other players, with other avatars inside the VR, or they can be with, with the characters, the recorded memory scenes. Uh, so it, the, the love will the love algorithm can can be generated in these kind of moments of connection. And then you decide as a player if this is part of something that you you feel like is could be could be for you and for your life and for your future something to save something to record. Um, yeah, so that's that's where we get to the dramaturgy game. This this kind of a we are giving a player a goal. So it's not like just okay. I'm like like usually you go if you go to art piece or anything like that. It's much more like open-ended the, the interpretation, but we keep, we give a little bit of like a structure, a little bit like a endpoint towards to to that you can walk towards to. So when you actually go to VR, this is uh, this is very much work in progress. So I don't have actual footage from inside the game engine, but this these pictures we have made with AI actually uh, and generating the whole whole world basically. And then I've, I've gone to multipress also, and uh, uh, just drawn these, these rows here. But these are not the final, these are just the kind of part of the process here. So, but this is the, maybe the most important part of the Lost Motion Eve, is these love and scenes. So we have three characters who are actually also developers of E-Labs. So we have Evelyn right here, Evelyn is the lead developer, lead scientist, um, and then she is married to Iona here on the left. Iona is an anthropologist, they're both professors, uh, educated people, uh, and they are actually in the beginning of their story, because we have three different stories in, inside VR, so uh, in the beginning of their story they are, they are having a honeymoon. So this picture right here on this video is a first kind of a test clip of how it's how the, the scene could look like a little bit. We 
it definitely is not the last one, but you can see a volumetric capture content there. Uh, volumetric is like 3D cinema, so to speak. Uh, it, it, we have captured the, the kind of 3D model, living 3D model or video of the character. So that's volumetric. Uh, I will get into, into that later. There's also photogrammetry used. That's not. These are all kind of just placeholders. Uh, actually, not the final product. But we are we are looking for the style. Actually, the composite of this. If you can see a little bit. So this is shot from the player's point of view, from from within the headset. Actually. And also just to, something to say about that. That dark character is actually our point of view character right there on the floor now. So uh, uh, let me see if I can get that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I can. Yes. So that's that's the the point of view character of the memory. So we we try to give people access to this main character's memories, and those characters are like this kind of black figures here because we don't. When, when you think about your memories, you are, um, you you basically you're not seeing yourself that much actually. So we, we want to use the volumetric for the the target or the the subject of your memory here, and then the the one who has who is experienced the memory, Evelyn here, is is um, is just this dark volume basically there. But this is not the final look of it, but this is the idea. Okay, so that's Evelyn Iona's story. Then there's another line of story, which is Grete, uh, uh, Anna and Henry. Henry is another Eve Labs worker, actually. So here are a couple of videos. Let me go first to do... Hmm. Just a sec. <laughs> All right, so the video that you see there uh, shot from the volumetric capture content, uh, content capture. There is a uh, Anna on the right, uh, the little girl, and then her uh, mother is there in the in the on the wheelchair. So the story is about this family is having a crisis because mom is paralyzed, and uh, then this little girl has to grow up really kind of uh, faster than was maybe good for her, basically, because Henry, her father, has to take care of the of the mother now. So that's basically, it's like a family drama going on in that storyline. Uh, yes, let me see if this, there's another, yes, this is the, here on the, oops, yeah, we cannot, Okay, thank you. Let's see if it works. So this this is from the mind upload. So I, as I mentioned, in the future, this mind upload technology is possible, and actually, Evlabs is is developing this mind upload. So these Evlabs characters are the very first ones in the world to make the mind upload happen happening to them. So um, here you can see a little bit of capture of that mind upload process that the mom is there sitting on the chair having this help with the helmet on and Ma Anna Anna is, is coming to to plead for mom and father that please don't don't do this. Uh, so Anna has grown up in that picture. So we have, we are the storylines are actually spanning over forty decades, four decades, uh, many of them at least or three at least, three days. Yeah, there you can see it, the, the quality is something like that. Okay, and then finally, the, la the last uh, of the main characters and the storylines is about Noen and Daniel and their uh, Noen's father, Jussi. Uh, they are living in Finland, in northern Finland, and uh, they, they come from this, they are like traditionalist, Lestadian, um, uh, really religious family, and uh, then the basic storyline is about 
Daniel and Noel falling in love with each, with each other, and and then later on the the father will find out or actually see them making out. <laughs> uh, in a, so so the father will will be uh, kind of shocked, and then father hits hits the hits Daniel, and you can see it here actually in the crowd. And Daniel get, it kind of it gets killed on that process. So that's the kind of the storyline, and it's it's about Noel. The question is if Noel is able to forgive his father in the end. So here you can see the videos about the, our test test uh, environment with with Daniel. Uh, just want to show we don't have the final final things to show. So these are really the tests that you. Uh, kind of uh, on the on the the production pipeline is going at the moment. Here is quite interesting. You can see these three cameras are from the death cameras point of point of view. So they are um, uh, Azure Kinect death cameras there, and this is the actual filming of that scene going on. So uh, they are basically taking the taking the scene from different angles. Those cameras. Also recording the death sensory data, and then in the end, it's all combined to make this volumetric uh, cinematic content. Uh, I will show a little bit of clips that will later on. Uh, so basically, also thinking of the game dramaturgy, uh, I think what is important is is that. The player has to face this really tough choice in the in the end, and the, the tough choice is that does he want to does they do they want to stay in the quantum C or in the love simulation E? Uh, this kind of a, and and kind of create a, their digital heaven, their digital afterlife in there. Uh, so do they want to stay in this place that fulfills all of their dreams? Or do they uh, decide to go back to Everland, which is the the memory memoverse, so to speak, is the place of the memories where we are living right now, basically. Uh, so when we get to that, this kind of a quantum C, as we as we call it, we can see the, all the characters in this kind of a really wide shape, kind of a heavenly slow motion positions. And uh, and that's the kind of how they uh, that's the final scenes of their their storylines there. And then we can decide if we want to stay there or or to get back to to make love algorithms to this reality here. Okay, and then my final part here, uh, considering the dramaturgy is the free play part, and this is I think what VR has to offer, especially. So this is from the famous, there's this famous saying about VR as an empathy machine by Chris Mill or suggestion. Um, and he has done this Clouds Over Seacraft documentary, which is pretty famous in VR scene, uh, following this kind of a Syrian refugees, girls' life, basically, uh, in the refugee camp. And um, so I, I think, kind of commenting on the if, if we are is empathy machine. Well, machine would hint maybe that everything is automatic somehow. That <laughs> that oh, that somehow when when you are putting on the headset, then you automatically starting to feel empathy. Of course not. You have to. There is this active part of of you being part and then actually doing your part towards reaching out the, the the other that's the only way you can actually feel empathy i think it's not automatic it's not passive it's active process um, but still it's it's interesting uh, as an idea so and and i think my point is that it's more than maybe empathy machine, it, it could be more like an intimacy machine, especially when you're starting to 
take the hands and they take the embodiment and embodied actions and interactions involved to the aesthetic system. Uh, so when I'm starting to design my things, I think about this, this as an end game, either a gamer or player. Uh, so this is actually a really old study about, about human brain and our representation of our body in our human brain, basically, and how much of the different brain areas are dedicated to different body parts. So uh, the basic thing we can see here is that hands are really prominent, they are really the major way uh, or major, really important from the brain's point of view, let's say. And, uh, and uh, for some reason brains have dedicated so much from our, uh, from the sensory input and for, from the motor uh, agency uh, for, for our hands. So this is important because, and interesting too, because we are allows us to use our hands and our body. So here's a really good example of this uh, machine to be another, is one of the, well, most like amazing moments and uh, experiences for me, like in, in the life when I was experiencing this. So basically here, uh, the process goes so that uh, that you, when you are having the headset on, let's say in this side, so when I'm having headset, so there's a camera in, attached to the headset, and uh, this camera here, the video feed of the camera, is is given to the to, to the other player in front of me, and I am seeing their video feed in my headset, basically. And then, after they do this kind of a synchronization, where they actually touch my hand and my friend's hand at the same time, simultaneously, my brain switches so that I'm actually there in the other person's body. My consciousness is located there, not here anymore. And, and then they remove this, this veil uh, between us, and we could see each other in the end. So then you see yourself from the other, per 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 the other person's point of view. You can approach yourself, and we were actually like when you are doing like a mirroring with the other person. You can we were we went to hug each other, which meant that I was actually seeing myself coming at me, and I was hugging myself. Uh, so more than a ego trip, I think it was just a good actual experience that yes, I am really just one among so many others here in this earth. Like having that out of body experience in the earth. Yes, yes. So if you mirror each other you can you can um, Yeah, yeah, if you if you mirror each other so you make slow movements, then you sustain this kind of like um, uh, experience of, of being in the other person's body, but if you do like really something wild, then it breaks because then you see that it's like off. If you know what I mean, you have it has to be like a mirror. You would be looking at the mirror. But yeah, so Peter Rubin has this book, uh, Future Presence, where he states this that we are is kind of an intimacy machine. Uh, okay. So intimacy. Many of us are thinking about sexual intercourse, maybe when, when we are saying intimacy, but actually it has different meanings, closenessness, and familiarity, friendships. Uh, also this, this meaning of close association with, uh, with something or knowledge about something, deep knowledge about something. Uh, so, yeah, this is to me, this is really, really crucial when thinking about this kind of design for playing and this kind of free form of playing. And we have also been really inspired by Barbara L. Fredrickson's notion of micro-loving moment, or she calls it micro-loving, micro-moment of love, but I prefer for some reason micro-loving moment. Uh, but anyways, uh, 
she, she is this PhD who has done research about love and she states that it's a momentary state of synchronization it's kind of mind-body synchronization and you can actually see it in EEG for instance uh, when our brain waves are getting kind of in the same similar frequencies there and that's actually the only way that you can understand what I'm saying right now is that you have similar frequencies firing in your neur neural networks in a, in a kind of a similar uh, patterns and, and rhythms or if you, you are saying something to me I can understand then you so it's kind of an entrainment between the brains and the body states and it can happen Fredrickson says it can happen between the, both the someone you know already or then someone you don't know so let's say that there's something funny happening someone sleeps in a non-harmful way hopefully and we both laugh or we recognize that there's something funny in that moment uh, then even us as strangers are like harmonious and synchronized for a moment there so for E we have been trying to use this, this kind of mirroring these open gestures and to, to encourage players and foster this kind of a intimate closeness but also to have that kind of a uh, safety almost of the virtual so at the same time if you are really close in avatar form uh, you, you you are still kind of behind that mask of VR so this is from icebreakers no one has ever seen this before this is from yesterday this video uh, I don't know if you see it on this slide because it's a dark tunnel that you are finding yourself in in the beginning. So there's the other other body, water spirit there. This is the end of one of the end scenes of of Machine. So there's an ice wall between you, and if you put your hands and your fingers on, on top of each other, you can bring from the musical track and then somehow that that's the, the that structures the whole experience uh, so we have designed these interactions in a way that uh, that they have like a story arc of a sort so all of the players even though whatever they do if they are able to form a connection or not they will go through these certain stages so it has an ending, it has a beginning and the end uh, kind of story. So we don't, so this is the part of like difficulties of making interactive, how, how to make the interactive narratives work. And, um, so we have decided that we provide the overall arching narrative, the structure, uh, and the, the kind of the sandbox and toys to play with and then within those toys and that sandbox you are free to create whatever you want with the other player basically right um, how much what's the time 50 minutes okay perfect so the last 50 minutes 15 minutes sorry um, I'm, I'm gonna just show you a few uh, pictures and videos about the the process of making this. So, uh, so this is the end device, or actually a Google Swift S2, S2 is, is another end device. So we are using DCVR because 
it's very heavy. The volumetric content especially is super heavy <laughs> and it has been super problematic also, but uh, we have found a solution, which is AI, but I, I will come there later. So we are using Unreal Engine uh, as game engine. So game engine means that it's the place where you compile all the assets, all the 3D objects, animate them, all the sounds to um, all the materials are basically programmed in, in the game engine. Uh, and yes, I said volumetric capture content. So that's that's there on the on the, the blue that picture is from the volumetric content. Then we have also utilized photogrammetry. So the other day, last week, I went to this hotel suite and I captured that. It's basically 3D capture of the bed there. Um, and that will go to that Kiribati scene that you saw earlier. Uh, so this is really interesting way to also create, because we don't have to have the whole crew in that hotel scene, or hotel room, let's say, or to, to take them to Kiribati, actually. We, we can generate that in, in the game engine. And we, we just have utilized studio for creating the, capturing the, the performers. Yes, we have also, also tried MetaHuman. I will show how, how it went really soon. So, tested content production pipelines. Here are, here are what I'm going to tell shortly about. So first we, we did try if 108 is cinematic 3D video could do the trick for us, which means that there's like, Canon has these lenses, these fish lenses, so basically you can have like a really high quality 3D uh, stereo stereoscopic, stereoscopic uh, view so for those memory scenes, we were thinking that maybe we could, um, we could utilize that. But the problem with that is, is that uh, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel like really that you are there, you're just looking at 3D playing, let's say, in the, in the game engine, in the headset. I mean, so you go to the headset and then, yes, you see, with two different eyes, but it's not like there's still the the movie screen in front of you. Uh, this is uh, I don't have video about this, but there's this live cast VR thing that makes it artificially too. So that's from that. Uh, so it basically it AI generates three three dimensionality. But yeah, we tried that. It didn't work. Uh, motion capture. Well. Motion capture, we did end up using this motion capture suit that you see here, which is Xsense. And uh, we also used Xsense Dormanus gloves, which are there. And we did try, here you can see this horrible thing on his head. Uh, we did try to also build a face link. So there was an iPhone right here hanging uh, in my bicycle helmet, from my <laughs> bicycle helmet. And that was capturing the face. So we were thinking if we would do the whole thing, uh, motion capture connected to 3D character creation. Um, we, so yes, as you saw that character who was black in the memory scene, the point of view of the point of view character, we have actually utilized the motion capture there, uh, but we haven't utilized the, the face tracking because it was unreliable actually. So photogrammetry, as I said, this is the hotel suite that I did. So we, we are utilizing this for creating the, the scenes and the furniture in the, in the memory scenes. Uh, and also, we have been using photogrammetry for capturing the, the, char the characters. Here is a test going on. And yes, we are using iPhone with the lighter, iPhone Pro. It, it, is, it has provided quite good results. Here you can see a little bit of test clip of Ika. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then we did, did try the Unreal Engine MetaHuman, which is super interesting. Uh, super high detail, kind of almost photogrammetry of photorealistic faces. So we did try to take Ika's photogrammetry face and then create uh, 3D mesh from it, 
which is here, and that was like basically we used the photogrammetry as a reference to build this kind of guy here, and then uh, then we built build the face link right here. That's the iPhone, and it guys doing the faces, and then the camera, and that's my voice. Okay. <laughs> So it's a little bit creepy. We did end up getting a little bit better results to from this trial, but it's also quite interesting and it's quite cheap as a production in pipeline method. So we are thinking that we could utilize this in some 2D in some 2D screen. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay. So we are thinking to utilize this into this screen at some point. We don't, we didn't end up using this meta humans in VR. Why? Because it's so freaking heavy. Uh, we are just cannot uh, even with PCs. They cannot run this yet on a, on a certain level. We can get to we can get to certain level, but then they started to look like uh, game characters. And we were after a loop of, of actually like a, that this is inside someone's memory, not in a game. And it's a whole different loop. And that's why we ended up using the volumetric video here. So when talking about the volumetric video, uh, usually the studios are like this or even bigger. And they cost like millions. Uh, or then it can be like this maybe, which is like a smaller space where there's a lot of cameras and lights around but then you cannot move that much you're basically like stick to these eight poses or something like that and we were we, we had uh, access to this type of studio but but it, it wasn't for us really because we, we wanted the, the, the players to be able the actors to be able to able to interact with each other so and we didn't have millions of budget to go to the larger studio also this is like a relatively small budget, let's say. Like, uh, well, big, big in a fin, fin, Finnish landscape, and, but still. So we ended up using Azure Kinect. Uh, here is like one shot from our tests here. They are more affordable. You can see three in there. Uh, and then we tested with the. Uh, so this is actually the depth camera of the Azure Kinect, yeah. So it can capture the depth sensor data there and see it. And then we test it because it's one thing to, te uh, to capture the data, but then another thing to actually get it functioning in VR. That's the thing we ask, actually. <laughs> um, so, and especially with Unreal Engine, it's not supported that, that well, we found out. So uh, here is DevKit. We did try that. But it wasn't for us uh, either because it had a really limited view and um, well, it was not really affordable because from that kit we we would have had to use some kind of an intermediary uh, transcoder service which costed like thousands and thousands and thousands too much for us. Uh, we did try Prekel, which is another volumetric content. Uh, uh, software, it was really inaccurate. But then we found out EF Eve, uh, and we that that was where we landed. So there you can see the three different camera angles pointing towards me, and that creates a kind of volumetric capture. And, and because we knew from the beginning that uh, this this technology is really still kind of fragile and in making in progress, so. I, I, that's why also I was thinking that yes, we are going towards those memory loops, so that it gives a, it's a little bit forgiving because we didn't want to have that 360 uh, volumetric loop, but that kind of a more like you're looking at it from the point of view of the point of view character in the volumetric scene. So that was okay for us. And uh, so here is a picture from the location from the studio. Actually, uh, you can see the three cameras there pointed. And this is the point of view character in the motion capture suit right here. This is the motion capture point of view character in motion capture suit. And then there's the 
uh, volumetric capture con uh, character uh, behind there in that helmet. So <laughs> we had a problem of we had to had the cameras really close to the motion capture character of the performer because we wanted to have the point of view of that that character and we were filming these two motion capture and the volumetric at the same time and it was really problematic especially when we wanted to we wanted to um, touch the, the, the motion capture character the, the volumetric capture character to touch each other that couldn't happen actually because otherwise the motion capture would have been in the shot so and it was always like this hell of of cables <laughs> in the studio. But yeah, here you can see how it goes. The really nice benefits of using volunteer capture is that this is the shot that the cameras take here. Uh, high. And then we can kind of frame out what we don't want from the shot and it ends up looking like that. And we can also do in-camera lighting. So you can see that kind of flickering effect. It's actually like done in camera. So, because we wanted to have that going on in that in that scene, that flickering. So I really like that. I could have that kind of cinematic uh, aesthetic and and influence cinema in a kind of cinematic means to this to this uh, to this to this uh, volumetric capture. Yeah. Uh, the files were huge, huge, but we found a compression solution, maybe one of the only ones in the world for us that supports Unreal Engine, which was AI. Uh, so we are partnering with them. Here's another shot from the, this is from the, the filming. So actually Daniel's head, this character's head is uh, resting here, right here in the final thing. So they had, they had to shoot them like one meter away so that the other one is not, the, the performer is not in the, in, the, in the shot. So that was really difficult actually sometimes. They, they had to measure them really closely. Okay, that's that. I'm happy to answer your questions. Any of you. Thank you. Oh, we're well, so silent. So inspired. Jason, there are two things that your project is completely different from many that we can see on the festivals. Um, because you are talking about narrative, immersive technology, all the ways you made, but the characters, the relationship between them, the concept of love. The connection uh, with love, not as a romantic stuff, just <laughs> um, the imaginary standard image that we have normally on the of everyone. So you have a gay couple, you have two women that want to have a baby. Um, here at Mix Festival, it's normal. We are talking about it, but when we talking about new technology, VR, all these things about futurism, then we see that there are not so many VR experiences with this diversity on the characters and um, your, the way that you, you build all the connection between the, the histories and everything, so congrats so much. And first question. <laughs> When did you have this idea of the project and how long time did you take to start the, the idea and to finally um, have the, the, the whole experience? So it started six years ago from the broken heart, <laughs> as the stories maybe, as they do. <laughs> so that was like an existential scream of what is love and why does it feel and why, why do we have to lose it? always so that was that was the very first thing and then uh, then I started to create Love Summers in Eve as an immersive theater piece and we were actually rehearsing already in 2018 we lost the location where it was set to premiere and perform to be performed and 
then because we lost the space, it was we we just basically postponed the whole thing, and we went with the writers. We went on that summer. We rewrote the whole thing. Also, I wanted to, to have a little bit more interactive parts there, so it became actually like a game theater, so to speak. So it was even more interactive. There was. Mm, Oh, let's say it like that. So, so um, uh, even more kind of choices for the play for the players or participants to go to in this vast immersive theater space, um, and, and a little bit like a lock and key structures and room escape structures also a little bit more and stuff like that. Uh, and then I did some other projects and a few years passed, maybe two, and then. But then it started to it, it started to feel. I think it was maybe Quest Two that launched or something like that. When it started to feel like yes, we could do this in a larger scale. That we could actually bring this to theater space, maybe or some kind of location, and to to make this a whole evening long. But I, I also know knew that it's not maybe wise to make it whole evening long in VR. It it can be kind of hard. So. It's now 50 minutes in VR, and then there's like a different sections, as I said. Um, you asked how this started. Well, I think it's just... It is really this, this kind of a pain, but then I believe, as Lucas was saying here before, I do believe that you, you have, don't have to... You, like, you cannot just vomit the, the pain to the to just express it in that way to the audience or you can but like I mean I feel like you have to then deal with it and then somehow come at, come in terms with it and uh, so I think for six years I've been really thinking about this now <laughs> and then it just I'm really kind of taken by the inspirations and uh, and uh, like uh, it's, I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm going to many different directions. Uh, so in the end, yes, it has like a storylines and these different different characters, but it has been a long process of thinking how can we make it more than just like telling the narrative? How can we actually part like make you as participant to those narratives? And that's that then the game design, the game dramaturgy of having this mission of you are there to witness this narrative scenes and then you can jump in in a critical moment when the, the kind of love algorithm the connection is formed and the, the emotion is is arising in that moment and you can then go inside that point of view character's body and actually capture the love algorithm to your own body and you can actually see them eye to eye the other character from eye to eye so, um, and I think that's really the powerful stuff that you can do with cinema, for instance, as well. To actually be there and to be seen and to watch the other, one, the other character. It's a deep philosophical experience, actually. It's not only uh, when you mention about empathy, that this, um, this experience that you said about the mirror that you see your body from another um, person, another point of view of uh, another one, and you see at the same time and interact and to connect to something um, bigger. So you made like a Eve cosmogony yeah, of that. <laughs> it's really interesting. And uh, what, which experience did you have with the audience and which cities, countries that you could share some um, some some people that said, "Oh, I feel now different from somehow after the experience." What do you remember that it was something good for you to hear from the audience? You mean like feedback from this? Oh, yeah. Uh, so we have shown this in uh, in Mach, which is the largest art museum in Finland, and uh, now for for months now, and. I've been there to witness it, and it's 
So it, it has been super in interesting too because it, yes, interactive. You cannot say that interactive piece of art is ready before you actually see it in the interaction of people, like how people are actually doing it. Uh, you have your imagination, you have your gut feelings, intuitions about how it's gonna roll out, but people are just surprising you so in so many ways, negative ways and positive ways too. Uh, <laughs> So, for, for instance, like, okay, you saw the, the teaser in the very beginning from the ice, the, the water spirits. There's the two water bodies that are e seeing each other. But uh, we found out that it, it's a problem for many first timers, especially the, even to look in the right direction. So, they're just I'm so amazed when you have that whole scenery around you that they're like, they can be like speaking up and looking into the moon that is rising in this piece and we have been really putting effort to make it beautiful so why wouldn't they look to that moon of course uh, but then we were kind of thinking that yes when they see the other person there maybe a little bit the water spirit is a little bit distant the other body is there but like people are naturally feeling drawn to that and like want to interact with that only not, not everyone is maybe even seeing it or thinking that it's, it might be like a mirroring thing from them. So they don't actually, it's surprising, even though they go there together with the other player, uh, so many interpret that it's not a living human being behind the avatar. It has been quite surprising. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's just, this kind of a, onboarding, giving the hints on what you are supposed to do here, but not kind of saying it so plainly and so straightforwardly. You want to keep that kind of uh, joy of discovery. <laughs> so it, that, that, that's really challenging. So we have, when we launched in August in Emma, then we had done several iterations just by watching people. And like it was well, I would say it was done like two months later. But yeah, but the feedback has been mostly really, really heartwarming. I mean, really good. So, so I, I, it has been really happy, happy, happy to hear. Yeah. And just to connect to Mix Festival, um, the theme of this edition, this special edition of 30 years, is different ways of existing. So it's really connected to your project because you're talking about different ways to to find the love or to experiment the love. Yes. So for you, just uh, what's your experience here at Mix Festival when we are talking about diversity and transmedia and other things to one moment in the the whole world? Not so easy. So talk about love and future using technology. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so I didn't mention it, but like the whole framing story of Eve when it's set in 2068 is actually quite dramatic. Uh, the border levels have risen considerably and uh, a lot of problems have, have come to the, <laughs> the whole globe. And uh, that's the kind of the background that but it's not like the, the key or like the, the very center of the whole thing, but it's like in the background. Uh, this kind of question, why would we need this digital afterlife? Why would we want to continue in this form, in, in metaverse form? Uh, has something gone wrong, maybe? Or is it just we want to have an extension to our lives, and more positive side. Uh, like, is it that bad if we want to, if we want our consciousness to continue <laughs> in this form? Uh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not that at all. But yeah, so it's kind of a sinister that okay, Everland, 2068 world will be kind of a, maybe a darker place. And then, in the end, the players are actually, they have to go back to Everland. 
So I didn't mention it, but like they are facing each other face to face in the final encounter, and we are teach kind of the the voiceover is teaching them how to make this micro loving moment by looking at each other deep to their eyes and looking through the avatar, which is you as a human flesh flesh form. And there's someone inside there, someone behind those eyes, looking at you. And I'm, I can kind of reach and try to look to that deeper layer of you. And create that micro-loving moment. And the, the message in the end would be that with those moments, we can actually create maybe a little bit more happier place. And, and we are putting even strangers, we actually want to put strangers together to be really like this close at the end. Um, and to make that point that uh, it's, it's not like, it's these little moments that actually count in the end. Because that's, only the, that's the only thing we have, these moments. The only thing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately we have to continue this talking Another stage, another reality is not here. Thank you so much if you want to share something before and just say uh, for everyone that the mix festival will continue and other talks too. So, yeah, that's No, I, again, I want to thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here.